boys and girls welcome back to the man cave this is uh camping season actually it's uh we're a little late for camping season we've been camping for oh man our daughter's 23 so we've been camping about 22 years our oldest daughter and we've had several campers this one here is our latest one we've had it about a year and a half uh, bought it with some issues some needed some loving but man this thing this is my favorite we've ever had it is an 88 bluebird wonder lodge 35 fc which stands for front control silver edition so it's a 35 foot front engine uh it's got a 32 8 3208 Caterpillar turbo diesel in it, 300 horse, uh, weighs about, I don't know, 35, 37,000 pounds, something like that. It's all steel, not one of these fiberglass ones. It is, a lot of people don't know about these things, um, but they are based, the, the, the theme of these Bluebird Wonder Lodges is aircraft. Uh, you know, the blue bird, the bird flies, so the airplanes. Well, the interior in this thing is, it's immaculate. The thing's got 157,000 miles on it. Uh, we bought it off the second owner. Um, got a steal on it because it needed, needed all new batteries, needed new tires, just needed a lot of things. Um, been sitting for about 10 years, not even moving. So, We've put tires on it. We've put all new batteries in it. It's been sitting here most of the time. We've cleaned it up, cleaned the inside and out. We still have to get a new mattress for it. We haven't taken it out and tried it yet. So that's what I want to do. I want to do soon. But before I do that, I want to change, at least change the oil, oil filters and the fuel filter. And, uh, you know, so we could take it out and take it to a campground and just try everything out. Uh, I'd like to have this thing ready to go to the Hot Rod Reunion in Bowling Green and stay the weekend there. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we're going to shoot for it. And uh, if we miss, we miss. But what we're going to do today is I'm going to fire it up, let the air suspension pump up, and then the engine will warm up and all that. I don't really need the suspension to pump up. Uh, you don't really ever want to trust air suspension for getting under one of these to work on it anyway. But I do have a jack and jack stands for a semi that will work on this uh, if I need to. I don't think I need to, to change the oil and the oil filters and the fuel filter. They're right under there, and I believe I can get under there with a creeper or even with that one. Just slide a drain pan under there and drain it out. But I want to get the engine good and warm. So what we're going to do right now is hop in it and fire it up. Come check this bad boy out. It's got some sunburn on it where it sat. This is the side that was facing away from the house it was sitting next to. And the sun just beat up the clear coat on this thing. So that's something for down the road. I don't even really care about that right now for getting out and using it. It's so cool anyway. So had to fix this here. This, this, uh, had like a particle board and rubber on there and I tore all that out and replaced that with uh, some oak hardwood and let's see here turn some lights on this is the uh, old top to the table the guy that owned this for us was a bigger guy 
So he put this table top in here because it was smaller, he could fit in easier, but we can fit in with this one. I'm a bigger guy too, but I, I can still fit in with that one. So I'm gonna put that one back in. It's actually like a Corian countertop. This is what it's got in it. So there's still some stuff sitting around my wife and mother-in-law been in here cleaning. But look how good a shape this thing's in. I mean, there are no rips in the interior or nothing. No, they don't smoke in it. They didn't smoke, no cigarette burns. The guy we bought it from was 89 or 90 years old and his wife was a year or two younger than him they're still living i mean they're still around we're gonna see if we can hook up with them once we get it out on the road and take them to a campground or take them for a ride in it or something because they love this thing i mean we became friends with them and they just wanted us to have it and they made us a sweet deal on it so here's the thing if you look at the way this interior is laid out it is very similar to an 80s aircraft. These overhead storage cabinets are much like the overhead storage you would see in an airliner from the 80s. Or one of those little Embraers. You know, they have that kind of stuff. I've been on a few of those, those smaller ones that have like two rows on this side and then one row on that side of seats. They're smaller, like a commuter jets. And all that. Another cool thing, look up here, it has pilot and co-pilot gauges. And even has an altimeter right there. I mean, how cool is that? What a cool camper. This is by far the coolest one we've had. And we will not we will not part with this this is going to be our last one because it is in such good condition there's no need to you know i might even at some point down the road there's a certain amount of hours you get on one of these caterpillars to where i believe you're supposed to uh replace the bearings in it and stuff like that we'll do that if we have to and it's a lot cheaper to buy another one i mean this thing in 1988 was about three hundred thousand dollars if you can believe that and we we didn't give nothing near that i mean we, we really stole this thing but but they they gave it to us as such a good deal because they just liked us and they they wanted us to, to have it so without further ado check this out just reach down here and I mean, look at that. How cool is that? Well, I had to do a little bit of work on it, but I mean, to have an old RV like this that fires up and runs like that, I mean, it, it'll sit there and run as long as you want it to. We drove it home, it was about I don't know, I'm gonna say about probably 40 miles from here where we bought it, it's close to home. Driving into Bluebird. Just bought it, doing good so far. Cruise control works. Engine runs good. Got a little clean up to do, but all in all, pretty solid old camper. Looking forward to lots of memories. Got the Wonder Lodge home. Time to go to work. Gonna get it tip top shape. But hadn't been moved except to put front tires. They had put the front steering tires on it about six months before we bought it, I think is what he said. So they they were on there, you know, they've been on there about two years now, which uh, 
but other than that, it hadn't been out on the road. And he only went to a local place, I mean, within a couple miles of his house to do that. Unless he had somebody come, I don't remember, we had somebody come here to put the rear tires on. Uh, so, you know, there was a mobile, like a semi repair place that came here. These are 22 and a half inch semi tires. And they came here and installed the tires on site. So, but we took this thing out on the interstate. Man, it smoked. It had so much oil that had settled in the turbo that it just smoked like crazy for a little bit and then it cleared right up. But we got it out, set the cruise control on 70, 75 miles an hour after a little. I tried warm, you know, I kind of felt it out a little bit first, but man, after 10 miles, it smoothed. Everything was really smooth. The tires rounded out good. Set the cruise on 70, 75, something like that. And, rolled on down the road with it until we got home so we're in love with this thing and we can't wait to use it we're going to, we're going to use it very soon so let's get out here and uh let her warm up start changing the oil All right, so here is the uh, target area. Two oil filters, fuel filter, drain plug. We're going to first take out the drain plug. Make sense? the old adjustable wrench here. <sighs> big motor, big torque on everything. This is a huge diesel engine. It's what, you know, built for over the road semis, buses, and I've even seen them in farm equipment and on generators. They're a really good engine. A lot of people don't like them. A lot of people call them a throwaway engine because they have, they're, they're not sleeved. Most diesel engines are sleeved to where, or most big truck diesel engines are sleeved so that you can, once they get, you know, a million miles on them, well, they just overhaul them. They just pull the sleeves out, put new sleeves in. That replaces the whole cylinder wall. They replace that with as a kit with uh, the cylinder wall, the piston, the rings. And I think they reuse the rods if they're still good, if they're not stretched or anything. And they put new bearings in. and It's overhauled at that point. And I believe they can do all that from underneath. Just pull this oil pan off and you can do that here. I could do that myself. I mean, I'm a diesel mechanic. I went to school for it, which I don't work on a lot of diesels, but I do work on my own diesel, so I could do that. But whether or not I'll do that myself, I don't know. It depends where I'm at at that point in my life. If I'm still doing this stuff, maybe. But, you know, if not, I might pay somebody to do it. I don't know. Getting older, folks. Got to be realistic about some things. Might not always be doing this stuff. Might not always be able to. But while I can do it, I'm going to do it. So I enjoy doing it myself. I 
and it does, you know, leak a little bit, but you know, that's pretty much the way you understand one's got oil in it is it's leaking. Uh, and they do put them on there tight, like with a regular passenger car engine, you know, gas engine, whatever. You don't put them on, you put them on, you put an oil filter or screw it up there until it touches and then go another three quarters or turn, something like that. three quarters of a turn or so. But with these big diesel engines, they make so much oil pressure that you really want to put them on there with a wrench, tighten them up with a wrench. Well, or they'll leak, leak on you. And even like this, they've probably been put on with a wrench, but they still leaked a little bit. So, And it takes two oil filters. So, a lot of oil holds about five gallons of oil, 20 quarts. So, it's exactly five gallons, which is what I bought for it. Five gallons of Shell Rotella T5 15W40, which this probably has regular conventional 15W40 in it, but the semi-synthetic blended oil, it's a little bit better oil. And with this having 157,000 miles on it, it's probably a good idea to put something a little better in it. And looking at the trans, this has got a ZF automatic four-speed transmission in it. And just looking at what I can see from here, man, that thing is enormous too. I don't know. I don't know if I'll work on this thing myself or not, but I'll tell you what, taking it to a repair shop is going to be pricey if you ever have to take it there. So, I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, it don't need anything. We're gonna enjoy it. The guy that I bought it from, he said 10 years ago, he replaced the air pump that supplies air to all the airbags for the suspension and the air brakes. Uh, replaced all the drive belts. Um, a few other things. I mean, I'm gonna check out the belts and see if they're cracked. If they're not dry rotted and cracked, I'm not gonna fool with them right now. I'll just take the chance, but if they're if they show the where they've got some if there's any chance at all then i will do it but you, in order to do that you've got to take the whole grill out the front bumper off swing the radiator out it's got a hinge on it on one side you just unbolt it and swing the radiator out of the way to where you can get in there and work on it so it's not it's not a you know a couple hour job like it is on a regular passenger car to change the drive belts or even less than that i mean serpentine belts usually they take 15 minutes to put one on if that this take this will take the better part of a weekend to change the drive belts on it <clears throat> so but i'm gonna do some close trips test it out let's see how it handles it you see what, you know what happens doing it do a quick inspection and everything you know the doors for you. Okay. Go ahead and put the drain plug back in. size that was it looks like about a one inch plug one inch uh, wrench maybe an eight on there but I didn't really know what it was so I'll just use the old adjustable wrench works fine oh that's good and tight good and tight that's 
my old friend Jurgen Fricky would say. Good and tight. Yeah, they're tight. Them there's tight. I'm getting splattered. Hey, hon, can you turn the air compressor off? I have dropped them before on other on my like my excursion with my 7.3 International and made a big splash and a big mess. Mm -hmm. Alright. Now next thing I gotta do is wipe off the gasket surface of where the oil filters go. Make sure there's no seal still on there. Y'all was gonna make sure the steel or the seal came off with the old oil filter. You don't want it to stay on there. And then you put another oil filter over top of it and that seal smashes that one down. And next thing you know, you got a oil, oil leak, a big one. It'll blow that seal out because it's a double seal. And then you got a big oil leak and then you end up you don't know about it. it. Pump it out of there real quick and you'll scatter your engine. All right, dear, can you put one oil filter in my hand, please? Which hand? This one sticking out. Okay. Thank you. We pre-filled these with oil because big old engines, big old bearings, lots of oil, you don't want this thing to start up dry. So go ahead and put oil in the filter and fill it up. And that way, when it starts, it's got oil ready to go. I also took a paint pen and I wrote the date on the bottom of the filter, the mileage, the name, Shell Rotella T515W40 blend. It's a synthetic blend oil. Tighten these filters up. Snug with a wrench. Okay. Next. All right. Miss Nikki's handing me these. I'm being careful not to spill. these up on there and I also put some oil on the seal so that it slides easy as I'm tightening it up so screwed it up until it touched and tighten it about about one turn with the wrench maybe a little more maybe actually probably one and a quarter a 
one three eighths maybe all right so those are on there now i'm going to pull off the old fuel filter and i've got a smaller size oil filter wrench for that Gotta get a hold of something and get some leverage. I'm gonna really have to pull on this. See if I can get it loose. There we go. Ah, oh, Lordy. I don't think that has to be that tight. Maybe. I don't know. But that sucker is on there. I get both hands on it. I have seen it before. Or I had to put a pipe on the oil filter wrench, which is just redonkulous. There we go, it's starting to turn now. And we will do the same thing with this filter we'll put the date and the mileage on this filter no need in putting the fuel because we know it's diesel fuel if you're waiting to look at the look at the fuel filter to tell what kind of fuel goes in it you've already waited too long to figure it out so let me see if i can unscrew this off of here without just making a huge mess off the mounting surface check to make sure that the seal came off and it did all right now all I got to do is pre-fill my new fuel filter and I'm gonna lube the seal on this with some oil. It's a little bit slicker than diesel fuel. We know that it tightens up really good. It doesn't pinch that seal, roll that seal up. You don't want that to happen. Back under. diesel fuel all over the paint marker so I'm gonna to have to read put that on there which is all right you just got it just took all that paint marker right off bring it up there till it touches oops Enough. Hey, honey, can you hand me my blue paint pen there, please? I'm guessing this is blue. Yeah, and also, 
There's some uh, lacquer thinner over there on my welding table. Can you grab that for me too, please? Pour a little bit on that rag, if you will. Real, real slow, we don't have to gush it. I'll be all right. Okay. All right, so here's the deal. We got the oil filters on we got the fuel filter on they're all pre-filled they're dated mileage and all the appropriate information on them for the next time we go into there we can just if we're not sure in our nose or lose our notes or whatever we can just go look at the filters and tell when we did it last and the next thing got to do is refill the engine with oil and i believe we've got to pop these two screws loose and pull this out i believe it hinges out the light there is the coolant fill this must be the oil we'll take a look and make sure everything over here is aluminum let's see here Screw that. And pop that out. There's a dipstick right beside that tube. It is quite long. to be the oil dipstick all right we're going for it we're going to put the oil in apparently this thing holds 20 quarts which is what i bought five gallons this will take a little bit to get in there i'm sure does not move too fast. No matter how you do it, it don't want to go real fast. Got it going through the funnel good. Then it fills the tube up that runs down to the valve cover. Likes to take its time. Previous owner probably has a special funnel somewhere in this side department. I just thought about that for putting this in. I'll check it after I get done putting this jug in. Okay. 
Well, look at that. That looks like that's got a small hole in it, though. I think I'm gonna stick with what I got because I think this will be a lot slower. First, before I do that, let me let me check and see if it's showing on the dipstick. Not yet. <clears throat> the confidence is high because in the in the manual on the engine alone it's the same cap right down in the valve cover which you can't get to that from outside here so they'd had to put this tube on it and it's on this side so i have a high level of confidence in that the transmission works you probably have to fill the transmission from inside the coach under the engine cover Yeah, it's on the stick. It's showing over full right now. A little fired up and watch the oil pressure. It's actually stuck. There it went. Come on, oil pressure. There it went. about 75 PSI of oil pressure, which is really good. I'll let it run a little bit, get up to operating temperature, and then we'll shut it off, check it again. All right, we did let it run and the engine got good and warm. So now we're going to check the oil level again. I've given it a couple minutes to drain back. So we're gonna pop that out, wipe it off. It's still a little bit over full, but I don't know. Specs called for 20 quarts, so that's what we put in it. Get this back in there. All right, it's dark enough that I can't hardly see what I'm doing, so I'm gonna call it a night. So, again, man, I can't hardly see. That light was bright. Again, uh, 
Thanks for watching our channel. We appreciate you uh, tuning in to us. Uh, if you like our stuff, just give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you don't mind. That'd be awesome. Rock on. Thank <laughs> you.